Messi gets it onto his left foot. Messi curls this one and it's too easy for Leo Messi. That's why I wanted Messi. Still Bernardo Silva gets it on his left foot, curls it in. Bernardo Silva with a sensational goal as we've taken the lead against Valencia. And I've got to say, this has come against the run of play. So welcome back to another episode of the Barcelona Career Mode series and this is episode number 35 and what could be the most important episode of the series so far. La Liga is on the line as we're up against Real Madrid at the camp now in a game that we need to win because if we don't, Real Madrid will probably end up winning La Liga which is something we do not want. This has got to be the most important El Clasico of the series so far. And the episode gets even better as we've got the Champions League quarterfinals in this episode as Barcelona face Juventus. Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo meet one last time. It's going to be epic. If you guys are enjoying the series, let's keep the support coming in. 2,000 likes and I'll get you an episode tomorrow. If you are new around here, subscribe for more FIFA 20 career mode content. And also, I've made a pretty big decision. I'm going to be taking a break from the Barcelona career mode series after we're done with this season. I feel like it's the perfect time for us to start a brand new career mode series, take on a new challenge in a different league and try and do something we haven't done before on this channel and that is why i've made the decision to do a leicester city career mode series next on the channel which i think is going to be a tremendous amount of fun because they've got some exciting players like madison jamie vardy of course and to try and replicate what they did a few years ago by winning the premier league could be a tremendous challenge and possibly even the champions league so leicester city career mode series coming next on the channel I can't wait for it. And as I said, I'm not stopping the Barcelona career mode. I'm just taking a break away from it to try something different on this channel and give you guys some different content. So Leicester City Road to Glory coming very soon on the channel. But for now, our focus remains still on Barcelona. Press conference time. Why don't you give Takefusa Kubo more playing time? Are you thinking of loaning him? Well, the reason he doesn't get more playing time is because of the amount of talents we've got in the team. I mean, if you look at our team, we've got Neymar, Messi, Griezmann and not just them. We've got Oscar Hara, Ansu Fati, Usman Dembele, Lautaro Martinez. It is very difficult to find a game time for Takefusa Kubo. So, yes, I did try and loan him out, but offers didn't come in. So, when we do a season 3, the plan will be to loan out Takefusa Kubo to not hinder his growth because I would love to see him at max potential. So, yes, I am thinking of loaning him out. Next question, when do you think Messi will retire in real life? Honestly, I'm not too fond of this question because it is just so depressing. The thought of Leo Messi retiring is just painful, but I do think he's going to be giving us at least four to five good years at Barcelona. And I think he'll be, what, 36, 37 at the time of retiring. That's my prediction, and I'm hoping that's true. Of course, I want him to play for as long as possible. But if I'm being realistic, I think he can still give Barcelona four or five very, very good years. So... That's what I'm going for. Next question, why don't you change Frankie de Jong's squad role to important or crucial? Well, the reason is he hasn't asked me to do so and if he's not asking, there is no reason for me to give him a new contract because if I do give him an important or a crucial squad role, that means I need to play him more often and although I probably will play him more often, having him on rotation squad role means that I can occasionally play someone like Fabian, Ricky Puig and just give other players a chance and Frankie won't get angry or disappointed or he will not ask to leave. But if he at any point asks me for a new contract, I'm of course going to offer him one because let's be honest guys, he deserves it. He is 90 rated at the moment. So as long as he's not asking me for a new contract, I'm not going to offer him one. So that's that for today's press conference. Let's move on. Who else but Leo Messi to win the player of the episode award. He again had a brilliant episode scoring a few times in La Liga last time around and he continues to perform. I've got to say, second half this season, he's been brilliant for us and I'm hoping he can keep this up and that is why you guys voted for him as your player of the episode. Last episode, I made a small error by not including a few goals and assists that Frankie Dion got in a game that we simmed and he's now up to 8 goal contributions because of that which... Is honestly pretty good. He might be able to complete that objective if we do get lucky. Ansu's on 20 goals and assists. I'm hoping to, you know, complete that objective very soon. Clean sheets wise, we're on 11, which is pretty good. Again, in this episode, we've got Real Madrid, so I'm not sure if we can make progress. But so far, we're doing pretty well with our objectives. I don't think we'll be needing to sign Phil Jones next season. 
So this is it, Barcelona, Juventus going head to head in the Champions League quarterfinals, Leo Messi going up against Cristiano Ronaldo and I feel like in this series at least it's going to be the last time these two legends battle it out and I'm hoping Leo Messi and Barca can come out on top. Juventus are going to give us a tough fight. Let's do a bit of scouting and see how Juventus are performing this season and well, not surprised at all. They are league leaders and convincingly so. They've just lost one game so far this season and they're on 87 points. I mean, this is going to be one hell of a game against them. So this is the team that I'm going for for this massive game against Juventus at home at the camp. Now, first legs at home, so that's a bit a problem because you guys know Barcelona away in second legs don't do that well so we need to get ourselves a convincing result in this first leg and not concede an away goal because if we do that would be problematic as this is the team that we've gone for Neymar, Griezmann, Messi, our front three, Arthur, Bernardo, Silva and De Jong in midfield, Grimaldo, Longley, Koulibaly and Trent at the back with Ter Stegen and goal. This is basically my strongest 11. I'm not making any changes. We're going with this team. Let's go out there and give ourselves a good advantage from this first leg. Here we are at the camp now as Barcelona come up against Juventus. Now these two teams do share a fair bit of history in the Champions League at least in recent times. In Berlin 2015, Barcelona beat Juve in the final, winning the Champions League. And a few years ago, Juventus knocked out Barcelona in the quarterfinals of this competition. So there is a fair share of history in this tie, but I'm hoping this time it'll be us that knocks out Juventus from this competition. So that's the Juventus team we're facing. And there you go, Cristiano Ronaldo is starting against us in this one. Look at their bench. How good is their bench with Lewandowski and all? Their first team, Ronaldo, Mane, Dybala. No wonder they're doing so well this season. Umtiti, Chiellini, Carvajal and Luke Shaw at the back. They've got a good midfield with Tony Cruz and Pjanic. That's a quality Juventus side. This, this tie is probably going to be one of our most difficult challenges in this series. It's not going to be easy. Oh man, de dealing, defending against Sadio Mane is going to be oh, a tremendous challenge. He beats me there, but thankfully his cross wasn't good enough and we do get it away. But that attack of Ronaldo, Mane and Dybala is just lethal. Antoine Griezmann on the attack for us. Griezmann sees Leo Messi. This is Barca's chance to attack. Messi tries to play it back in to Griezmann, not even Neymar, but it's intercepted by Chiellini. And there goes that chance. We should have done better there. Ronaldo in behind to Paolo Dybala. This is not good. Dybala puts the cross back in. Mane's header was powerful, but off target. Half time against Juventus, and I've got to say, it's been a very cagey first half. I feel like both teams are showing way too much respect for each other, and that's why in this first half, we haven't really seen either team take an extra opportunity or just be more daring in this game. It's, it's, it's been really cagey and it's been nil-nil. No goals scored by both teams. Let's see what the second half brings. But I do want to try and take an advantage to tune in for that second leg. So I'm going to give it my all. Ronaldo finds Mane, who seems to be the danger man for Juventus in this one. Big chance there for Mane to strike first in this tie. But thankfully, Ter Stegen made the save there. Conceding there at home would be tragic for us, you know, being a goal down after 50 minutes. But thankfully, Ter Stegen came up clutch with a save. Mane so far has been the danger man for Juventus. On the attack we go though, Bernardo Silva does brilliantly. Chance for maybe a cutback to now Antoine Griezmann. He gets it onto his left foot, tries to curl it in, but it's blocked off by one of the Juve defenders. Clever pass into Bernardo Silva. Bernardo releases it to Leo Messi and now Messi's pushing forward. His stamina is extremely low but he's still getting forward. Finds Arthur. Arthur now to Bernardo Silva. This could be a goal for Barcelona but he scuffs his shot. That's a massive chance wasted by the Portuguese international. Here's Arthur finds Neymar and this could be our chance now. Antoine Griezmann brilliantly. Oh, but Chiellini man, he's been a rock at the back for Juventus in this tie. Arthur finds Neymar, now Leo Messi on the attack, Messi takes a good touch there, does well, finds Neymar, this could be our chance, Neymar curls it in, and at the death, Barcelona have taken the lead, it is Neymar Jr. who scores for us in the Champions League, quarterfinals against Juventus, what an assist from Messi, he was almost fouled, in fact he was, but the ref decided to give the advantage to us, and then it fell to Neymar after a great pass from Leo Messi, Neymar did what he does best, and that is score goals. Look at that from Neymar. Gets it from outside the box, curls it past the goalkeeper, as Barcelona have an advantage to take to Turin. What a goal from Neymar. And it's full time, and we've managed to beat Juventus 1-0. We've got the advantage for the second leg, but of course, it's not a big advantage, but I'll take it. This game was looking like a 0-0, because it didn't seem like any of the two teams would adventure this in creating chances, but 
Ultimately, we came up with the goods. Neymar scored such an important goal for us. And Barcelona walk away with a 1-0 win. This is massive. Is this win big enough? Honestly, I don't think so because we'll need to perform in Turin. We can't be Valverde and just bottle it away. So... We've got to put in a good show in that second leg as well. Have a look at our schedule, man. This is honestly brutal. On Wednesday, we had, of course, Juventus in the Champions League. A couple of days later, Real Madrid in La Liga in what could be a title decider. So we can't really afford to rest players in this one. And then a couple of days later, we've got the grueling second leg against Juventus in Turin. So... We've got a huge week of football and a difficult one as well. Our focus for now is back on La Liga's. We've got ourselves probably the most important El Clasico of the series. Because if we lose this, Real Madrid could end up winning La Liga. But if we win, we close the gap down with Real Madrid. And we'll still be just a point behind Atletico. So that means anything can happen in La Liga. We're at the camp now in front of our own fans. Barcelona need to get the result against Real Madrid. You are just about to start your match versus Real Madrid who occupies top spot in the league. Are you confident heading into this game? I'm gonna say it's an open match. It's Real Madrid, it's Barcelona, Classico, anything can happen. I've got a big decision to make on which players to rest and which players to start because look at the fitness of our team. If we play these players against Real Madrid with this kind of fitness, we could risk injuries and also they might not be fit for the Juventus game in a couple of days. So... I've got some major decisions to make. I'm actually making some really risky moves for this one against Madrid. Look at the team that I've selected. No Leo Messi, no Neymar. I've decided to rest them because I feel like I'll need them more against Juventus in that second leg. So they've been rested. We've still got Griezmann up top. Ansu Fati and Lautaro get a big chance to shine here in an El Clasico. Alenia, Fabian and Arthur in midfield. We've got Firpo, Longley, Konati and Smedo at the back. We're still using Castegat in goal because we know how amazing he is. On the bench, we do have the likes of Leo Messi and all. In case we need them, we will bring them on. This is the team we're using for this all-important El Clasico. Winner could basically take La Liga home. This is massive. It's a Clasico at the camp now and the stakes couldn't get higher than this. And it also seems like Real Madrid have made some rotations. They've still got Son in the attack, but they've decided to go for Martin Odegaard and Rodrigo up front. By the way, he just scored a hat-trick in the Champions League, which is just nuts. Pogba in midfield, they've got Nacho Fernandez captaining the team, Eda Militao as a right back. That's still a very good Real Madrid side, but of course they have made rotations, so I think it's an even battle. Let's get right into this, guys. The most important El Clasico of the season. Martin Odegaard on the ball for Real Madrid, looks to create an early chance, brilliantly done from Odegaard, I can't even complain about that, the Norwegian attacker that just completely destroyed my defence, he laid it off to Heung-Min Son and Son doesn't miss chances like that, Real Madrid have taken the early lead, this is not good, but... We've been accustomed in this series to, you know, make incredible comebacks against Real Madrid. And I'm hoping we can do exactly that. But a fantastic goal from Madrid here. Here goes Ansu Fati on the attack. We need him to perform in this one. Releases it to Carlos Alenia. This is brilliant. Alenia cuts this one back to Lautaro. Let's go. We're back in it, guys. Lautaro Martinez coming up clutch. We had to put faith in him to start in this game. And he's repaid that faith by scoring for us. Brilliant goal there from the Argentine. Carlos Alenia picking up the assist for this one. Ansu Fati started the move. It was a brilliant cutback from Alenia. Lautaro did the rest, getting ahead of Nacho. And it's back on level terms. 1-1 against Real Madrid the camp now. Alenia releases Ansu Fati now. We could be hitting Real Madrid with another goal. Ansu lays this one off to Lautaro who gets his second goal within like three or four minutes. Lautaro Martinez has completely turned this game around within like five minutes, scoring a brace for us. As we make it 2-1 at the camp now in a game that could potentially decide the title winner. Ansu Fati was brilliant in this attack. He created the goal, was unselfish and laid this one off to Lautaro who did the rest. We've now got the lead. It is our job to keep it. 2-1 Barcelona. Real Madrid on the attack with Martin Odegaard. He curls this one in. Long lay. That's chaotic. Marquinhos shoots. No way. That is such a poor goal to concede. I mean, what even was our fault in that attack? We got the ball with Longley, but for some reason it fell back to Marquinhos. We got the shot off, then Son. Ah, that is such a frustrating goal to concede. Like, 
It was such a lucky goal for Real Madrid and with that they've managed to equalize. It is 2 all. Alenia finds Antoine Griezmann back into Carlos Alenia who's having a brilliant game in this Clasico. Alenia tries to curl this one past Courtois. It falls to Lautaro whose header is somehow saved by Thibaut Courtois once again. This has been an incredible game with chances flowing in like nothing else as it's 2 all now but it could have easily been 3-2 Barcelona. Pogba on the ball inside to Heung-Min Son back into Paul Pogba and he slams this one home and just before half time Real Madrid have made it 3-2. This is such a painful goal to concede because I thought we were dominating this game but Real Madrid get lucky and they've scored again. This was not a lucky goal to be fair. It was brilliant play between Son and Paul Pogba and Pogba just slammed this one home. No chance for Ter Stegen. We are 3-2 down before half time. That's frustrating. We need to show a big performance in the second half. It is literally now or never for us. We need to make some changes and they need to work. I'm bringing on Frankie de Jong for, of course, Arthur. And also, I'm very tempted to bring on Dembele for Antoine Griezmann, who for some reason hasn't had the best of games. But I'm not going to do that because we know Griezmann has the ability to pop off anywhere and score the goal. So I'm just bringing on De Jong for now. It's now Frankie De Jong. I'm waiting for Lautaro to make the run. He finally does make the run. Lautaro 1v1. Go on, no! How's Modric made the tackle? They know it was Goretzka with the tackle. How's he made that challenge there to stop Lautaro from shooting? Alenia once again on the ball. Releases Nelson Smedo. This is brilliant. Here goes Smedo now. Smedo finds Ansu Fati. Could be a goal for Barcelona. It is a goal for Barcelona. Ansu Fati scoring in an El Clasico. We've wanted to see this moment from the start of the series and we finally get to witness it. Ansu performing in a Clasico. Smedo picking up the assist for this goal. But this is important because now we've equalized against Real Madrid and there is enough time for us to potentially get the winner. We've got the fans on our side. We're playing at the camp now. Let's go for it. It is 3-3 in this crazy Clasico at the camp now. I feel like now is the perfect time to bring on Usman Dembele for Griezmann because the pace could really help us in these final 20 minutes. Here goes Ansu Fati on the attack for Barcelona once again. Still Fati, look at the pace. There's no defender that can catch him. Ansu laying this one off to Lautaro who's on a hat-trick and he gets his hat-trick goal in a goal that could potentially win us La Liga. Lautaro Martinez with the hat-trick in an El Clasico. Unbelievable moment for him and his career. Our number nine has just done an absolute madness in the Clasico. Ansu picking up an assist for this goal, but Lautaro scoring his third of the game, which could potentially win us the title. How crazy is this for a moment for his career? He's been our backup forward for the entire season. He gets this chance in a Clasico, and he scores a hat-trick. We've actually done it, guys. We've actually beaten Real Madrid at the camp now, 4-3, which means we're now on level terms with Madrid at the top of La Liga. I mean, Atletico could be league leaders, but we're in a good spot to potentially win the title. Lautaro was stunning in this game. A hat-trick in a Clasico. Ansu Fati was brilliant as well. What a performance. Were you expecting Martinez to get a hat-trick today? Not really. It was a breathtaking performance from him. I was just expecting him to maybe try and score, but he went and destroyed Real Madrid at the camp now. Brilliant performance. So we are finally above Real Madrid in La Liga. Keep in mind, it is the head-to-head -head record that matters in the Spanish league and that's why we're above Real Madrid. We just need to overtake Atleti now to win the title. They're a point above us. They slip up once and we'll be league leaders. Time to focus on the Champions League once again as we've got the second leg, Champions League quarterfinals against Juventus. First leg, we did well. We got ourselves an advantage by beating them 1-0. But this one's away in Turin against Juve. Anything can happen and we need to put in a good showing away from home. Here we are, second leg against Juventus and this is the team that I'm going for. It's the same exact lineup as I went with for the first leg against them. I'm not making any changes. Neymar's back in the team. Antoine Griezmann, Leo Messi start as well. Bernardo, De Jong, Longley, Koulibaly, all of them are starting. We've got to get it done, guys. We need to be in the semi-finals of the Champions League. Messi versus Ronaldo once again in the Champions League. We're again playing, I guess, the same exact team, but now they've got De Ligt in the lineup as well. Mane, Dybala, all of them starting. Looks like Juventus' team looks even stronger now with De Ligt back in the side. This is going to be tough. Alejandro Grimaldo looking to bring this one forward. Look at the run from Grimaldo. He might actually end up going all the way. Releases it to Leo Messi. Ah, the shots blocked off by Delic, but Grimaldo with a ridiculous run into the Juventus box. Still Sadio Mane. He is their danger man. Cross comes in. Alejandro Grimaldo deals with it. No, it falls to Miral and Pjanic and there goes our advantage. Pjanic, the Bosnian, has equalized. There is 1-1 now. The advantage that we had completely neutralized. It is now starting back from square one. We're playing away as well. 
Oh man, we're in for a tough, tough fight. Ralem Pjanic on the attack, the goal scorer. Juventus being very patient with their build-up play. Good cross coming in, Mane with the header. And that could have easily gone in. We got really lucky there, Sadio Mane again causing us problems. It is halftime against Juventus and I really feel like we need something different and call me crazy but I'm making a ridiculous change. I'm bringing on Lautaro for Neymar. I know this sounds ridiculous but Lautaro Martinez is in the form of his life. He just scored a hat-trick against Real Madrid. Neymar has been terrible for us in terms of form. I'm making a big risk by bringing on Lautaro for Neymar. If this doesn't work out, I'm sure you guys are going to criticize me, so I'm really hoping it does. Back to Grimaldo. Now it is Frankie de Jong. Inside to Griezmann. Good touch to keep hold of the ball. Still Griezmann. Now Lautaro. That's a brilliant touch from Lautaro. No, he misses his chance. Drags his shot just wide. How has he missed that? Lautaro. I put my faith in him in such a big game. And he misses the chance there. Danny Carvajal. Cross whipped in. We should be getting this away. No, we haven't. Ter Stegen saves. What's happening here? Somehow we survive. Oh my goodness, what a moment in this one. We almost conceded there. Long ball to Paolo Dybala, he controls it brilliantly. Dybala looks to bring it inside, that is brilliant defending from Clément Longley. Absolutely sensational, as he's now pushing forward as well with the ball. Releases Grimaldo, Barcelona could be on the counter-attack. This game's been nuts. Here goes Grimaldo with pace. Cuts this one back to Messi, ah, heavy touches him, Titi gets it away. Now Frankie de Jong. Inside to Griezmann, Griezmann to Lautaro, big chance for Lautaro and the decision to play Lautaro has paid off as he scored for us in this Champions League quarterfinals. We've equalised against Juventus in this tie but on aggregate we've got the advantage now 2-1 and guess what because this is an away goal in Turin, Juventus need two more goals to progress which means we've got a great shot at making the Champions League semi-finals. What a moment for Lautaro, he recently scored a hat-trick against Madrid and now he's gone ahead and scored against Juventus in this second leg. Unbelievable. And that's full time. We've done it. We've knocked out Juventus from the Champions League by a goal. 2-1 on aggregate. Somehow we managed to get it done in Turin. Lautaro Martinez the hero and we are through to the Champions League semi-finals. This was a difficult tie against Juve but we got through them. Oh, we're getting some interesting questions now finally through press conferences. This one's about Neymar. What does today's performance mean for Neymar? Ups and downs, I guess he was terrible in this game. Hard to bring him off. I'm glad that Lautaro came on and scored for us. What are your chances of going through to the final? I'm just going to say as long as we stay true to our values, anything can happen. I'm hoping we can make it to the final, man. Winning back-to-back -back Champions League trophies. That's what's up. Looking at the results of the quarterfinals of the Champions League, Man City knocked out Atleti, Spurs somehow knocked out PSG, we knocked out Juventus, and AC Milan knocked out Real Madrid, which is ridiculous. Looks like Milan are back in the top of European football. And in the semi-finals, we're going to be facing AC Milan. Oh my god. One of the fallen European giants is the team that we'll be facing. Spurs and City in the other Champions League semi-finals. This is going to be a fun semi-final tie. Barcelona, AC Milan. And that should be very soon coming up in this series. Next episode for us though is all about the Spanish Cup final. We've got Real Madrid in the final, we're facing them again and it's a chance for us to win another trophy and I'm gonna go for it. So next episode's gonna be exciting and the episode after that we've got AC Milan twice. It's gonna be an exciting few episodes to end off the season. Here's a quick look at our season objectives. Ansu Fati was tremendous in this episode with three goal contributions and he's now up to 23 so soon we should be done with that. We still need four clean sheets in La Liga so that's a bit tricky. It doesn't look like we're gonna complete the best of La Liga challenge because players like Hazard, Son kept winning the player of the month award so that is a bit frustrating but next episode we've got a chance to win the Spanish Cup the first of three trophies we've got to make that count so before we wrap up this episode it is time for you guys to make your vote count for the player of the episode award and I'm sure you guys know the players that will be getting nominated for this one first one Lautaro Martinez he just had to get the nomination because a hat-trick against Real Madrid and then the goal that sent us through to the Champions League semi-finals and that's why he is your first nominee your second nominee Ansu Fati he was brilliant as well for us against Madrid and that's why he's been nominated. So Lautaro and Fati, those two are your nominees. Click the i button on the top right of your screen to vote for either of them. This was an eventful episode, that's for sure. We're through to the Champions League semi-finals. We're of course second in La 
Liga just a point behind Atleti, things are getting really heated in all competitions. Next episode, we've got the Copa del Rey final as well. So, you guys are enjoying the series, keep the support coming, let's smash out 2000 likes. If you are new around here, subscribe for more FIFA 20 career mode content and I'll catch you guys next time.